It has now been 10 years since 25 year old Jessica Herringa disappeared from a gas station in Norton Shores where she was working alone at the time. And to this day, her body has never been found. Jeffrey Willis. At one point, Bloom told investigators that he could lead them to hearing as a body. At the onset of this investigation, he was considered merely a witness, somebody to speak to Jeff Willis's character. That is until he made a certain call to a detective. I didn't know I this is Kevin Bloom sweating in a Muskegon County interview room back on June 17, 2016. His cousin, Jeffrey Willis, was being investigated for several crimes. We've been here a million times. I know you are. Tell us this last piece and we'll get you some rest. Okay? Where? Jail. Willis had been arrested a month earlier for the attempted abduction of a 16-year-old girl, Madison Nygaard. I'll put these around the bush. All right. Okay. All right. Well, what story do you want to hear? You want to hear your side of the story. Okay. And you know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. I think you do. I know you do. Okay. Okay. You know I do. A search of his computers led investigators to a digital stash of information and photos relating to other possible victims. It was done in such a way that in, uh, that put the number, the date, if you will, of their deaths as part of his little package. And so uh, not only did he have separate folders specifically to those two women uh, labeled under the folder of Vic, V-I-C-S, obviously argued that that meant victim, but he was very keenly interested in anything uh, related to both of those investigations. If I get up and walk out, are you going to slam me down? And, and no, I just, just relax, all right? No, I'm ready to go. A month later, Willis is being looked at for the kidnapping and disappearance of Jessica Hearinga from a Norton Shores Exxon station on April 26, 2013 and the murder of mother Rebecca Bletch, who was killed while jogging near her Muskegon County home on Automobile Road. I have nothing to do with Becky. I have nothing to do with, with uh, Jessica, and I have nothing to do with that 16 year old. You know, I lost my mind. Investigators talked to Kevin Bloom early on as a witness, someone to speak to Willis's character. That is, until he called a detective with this strange bit. I had a very vivid dream. Sunday or month, Saturday night. Um, I don't know if he handed me a handgun or not. Essentially saying, you know, I had this dream last night where I touched the gun and of course, no detective is going to leave that untouched, and so all the antenna go up, and now all of a sudden we focused in on him. Bloom, a state corrections officer and occasional firearms instructor, initially tells them he's suspected Jeff's involvement in the killings. How do you know that girl, Madison Niger? She danced with, uh, I don't know her, I've never met her, but she danced with my daughters. That's what my daughter said. Until it becomes clear the only connection Jeff Willis has to either Rebecca Bletch or Madison Nygaard is Bloom. I knew Rebecca. I know. Yeah. We know that. Right. My wife knew I know Rebecca. Mm -hmm. right. All right. During my kid and my little boy, you ate, you saw her. She was a nice lady. Mm -hmm. I don't hurt people. He swears he had nothing to do with either of those cases. But what about Jessica Hearinga? What souvenir do you take from Jessica? You, you told me the answer to that by answering oh, the way you did before. Yeah, mm -hmm. maintaining certain panties. Over three hours into this particular interview, Bloom seemingly cracks. He says he actually saw her body in the basement of a home that used to belong to Willis's grandpa. I go downstairs, and then I step to the bottom of the step, and I see that girl. Okay. At first, I, I said, cool. She was dead. Okay, how do you know she was dead? She was just not moving. Okay, well, what else told you that she was dead? Just her color. Describe it for me. You don't ever want to see something like this. He offers substantial detail. When her hair was here, okay. and her back, and her arms are out. Like this, and I don't know what he had tied. He says, uh, this is that gas station girl, Jessica. 
and then explains that he helped Willis hide her body. We put her in here somewhere, and then he said he moved her. How did you put her in there? We buried her in the sheet. You guys in him? How did you bury her in the sheet? I helped him, and he said he was going to hurt my wife. Okay. okay. There was a brief moment in time uh, when we f we thought for sure we had the the information we needed in order to discover where Jessica was was laid to rest, essentially, and that Kevin Bloom was going to take us there. Bloom was taken to an area he pointed out on a map, but nothing was found. We threw her in like that, and she hit, and I was scared. And he said, "You'll keep your mouth shut, or you know what's good for you." And then, just hours later, that same day, Bloom begins claiming he was making it all up. I'm so tired, and my bags are down, and, and I lied about everything. I've never there? seen Jessica, and Jeff never called me. Just, I'm telling you right now. Bloom exercised his Fifth Amendment right not to testify during Willis's trials. He was charged with obstruction, lying to an officer, and accessory after the fact in the hearing a case. The good news is, is that for, for murder in, in the state of Michigan, there's no statute of limitations. And so we can be very patient. Uh, and trust me, uh, on behalf of all of law enforcement and my office, if there's enough evidence to show that, uh, he will be charged. Now, Jeffrey Willis remains behind bars in communications with Fox 17. Just this month, he says that he maintains that he is innocent in all of these cases. Kevin Bloom, he served 476 days in jail before he was sentenced to time served and then released in January of 2018. For now, in the newsroom, Michael Martin, Fox 17 News.